Hey guys, so for this video, I want to talk about all the new settings Epic added in the last version 11.20 update. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, they changed a decent amount of stuff around and added some new options to make your game both look and run better. I will quickly throw up some timestamps for everything I cover. Be aware though, these new graphic settings will help boost your FPS on both console and PC. So I highly recommend sticking around until the end. With that being said, let's dive into the first change you'll notice, the updated video settings page. It's been given a big revamp and now shares the same style as the advanced controller settings one. At the top, you have your display settings, which have not really changed. The only difference is that there's now a helpful explanation of what each setting does, as well as a list of all the different options you're given. This applies to all the settings on this page by the way, not just the display ones. Anyways, after that, you have the graphic settings, which has two new options, and then after that, the graphic graphic quality settings, which has one new option. Finally, there's your advanced graphic settings. That's the part that contains the big new option you're all here for, DirectX 12. Before we get into that though, I'll start from the first new feature at the top, User Interface Contrast. As the name implies, this simply changes the contrast of your menu and makes everything look more saturated. This includes all the stuff you see when you press escape, and then all the different interfaces that pop up, like your settings, when you select them from the menu. 1.0 is the default value, and then it goes all the way up to 2.0. This is obviously not the most impactful change because it doesn't alter the way your actual game looks, but if you had difficulty seeing the interface and your settings, you no longer have to change the vibrance in your NVIDIA settings or your monitor settings, which is pretty nice. I personally found anywhere from 1.05 to 1.20 looked the best. The other new features within this setting is your brightness setting. Remember that really ugly settings page that was only used to change your brightness? Well, that's gone, and the option to change it is now here. Last thing is your colorblind settings are also now here, but there's still the original page dedicated to changing it. The next big new feature is the auto set quality option. What this does is automatically set all the graphic options below it based on your computer's hardware. So if I press the button, it benchmarks my computer specs and then spits out what settings it thinks I should play on. In this case, all epic because my PC is pretty beefy. However, since this is a competitive based channel, we don't really want that. What we want is to use the low quality preset so everything is on near, low, and off. By default, that gives you the 44% for 3D resolution, but I recommend using 100% so it doesn't look too bad. All in all, those graphic quality settings will give you the most FPS while still looking pretty decent as you can see through my gameplay. The most important new setting is your DirectX version. By default, it's set to DirectX 11, which is what we all ran prior to this patch. And then now, you have the option to choose DirectX 12, which is currently in beta for Fortnite. All you gotta know about DirectX 12 is that it helps PC players with higher end GPUs to experience a higher and steadier frame rate. This is because DX12 delivers better CPU performance and allows for the distribution of rendering across multiple cores. I'm not gonna lie here boys, usually when I make these FPS boost videos, the tips and tricks do help, but I personally don't get a huge boost. With DirectX 12 though, my game is the smoothest, most responsive, and most stable it's ever been. I still get my usual 240 FPS, but it almost never moves or fluctuates. Even when I turn around and spin like a madman looking all over the place, I barely drop any frames at all. A great YouTuber named Tech Epiphany did a benchmark himself, and he averaged more than 70 FPS more with DirectX 12 enabled. That is insane. The thing is, it's highly dependent on your specific machine and whether or not you can actually use it. How do you know if you can use it? 
That's a great question. The main requirement is that your graphics card is one of the many on this list. I'll leave a link to this page and the full list in the description, but basically every card released in 2015 or newer, aka GTX 950 to RTX 2080 Ti, they're all on this list and have DX12 compatibility. The other requirements are that you need to be on Windows 10, which you can see here, I am, and it even says my DirectX version is version 12. And then you also need to make sure your drivers are updated so it can be enabled. Once you do all of that, you can turn it on and you get a pop-up message telling you to restart your game for the changes to be applied. Now, there are some things I want you to be aware of. The first is if you happen to close out of your game and you come back to your settings still being on DirectX 11. This is a very common problem and will likely happen to a lot of you. All that it means is that your window user settings within your game files is on read only mode. Thus, we gotta turn it off read only. To do that, search up percent local app data percent in your Cortana search down here, and then click on Fortnite game. From there, click on saved, config, Windows Client, and go down to Game User Settings. Right click on it and hit Properties, which will bring up this window. Most of you will have the read only box ticked, so uncheck it and then hit Apply. This will then allow you to make changes within your normal settings, like using DirectX 12, and they'll actually be saved. Another important thing I wanted to address was that some people have found DX12 to be very buggy. Even people with better and beefier PCs than mine have experienced frame drops, game crashes, and audio problems. This is not happening to everyone, but it will happen to some people because DX12 is in beta. My advice for you guys is to simply make sure your drivers are updated, and if the problem still persists, just go back to DX11. Epic is still actively working to optimize DX12 and work out all its kinks, but until the point where it's brought out of beta, all you guys having issues should just stick with the older version that works. The last note I wanted to make was that DX12 works much better with all low settings and multi-threaded rendering on. Not Snuffy found you got around 30% higher FPS compared to when you have multi-threaded rendering off. Why? I believe part of this is because the feature has to cache the entire map, meaning it basically needs to scan the entire map once so then it can optimize it and render them in faster at later times. That's why you might notice in the beginning you get random flashes, almost like someone is taking snapshots, and you'll notice that building pieces look kind of like mobile graphics when they are first built. This is all normal and exactly what DX12 does, so to to give it the easiest time caching as possible, put all your settings on low and multi-threaded rendering on. Alright, that's enough talk about DX12. Let's move on to the big new console setting, Motion Blur. You guys probably know what Motion Blur is by now, but what's new is that Epic has given all PS4s the ability to turn it off. Before, you could only turn it off on PS4 Pros and Xbox One Xs. My recommendation is to turn it off and keep it off, because it does hurt your FPS and it gives you input lag when it's on. So, unless Unless you're a creative warrior, using it for clips, turn that crap off ASAP. The last and final settings change I'll talk about is the show FPS setting. Some of you guys may have noticed that it's completely gone. Literally, it's not there anymore. Don't you worry though, because you can still enable and disable the FPS counter. What you need to do is to go to your game user settings like we did before, but instead of right clicking and going to properties, you're going to edit the file. Look for the option called B, show FPS, and then either put it to true for it to be on, or false if you want to turn it off. Then just save and you're all set. Overall boys, those are all the new and advanced settings you need to know about. If you have not at least tried out DirectX version 12, then I highly recommend giving it a shot.
It may not give you the best results right away since it is in beta, but by the time they fix it and optimize it, I can guarantee it will be the most useful setting Epic has ever added. So if you guys enjoyed the video, then do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and to turn on post notifications. Shout out to everyone using code Jerrion. My code is just Jerrion. It's not it's Jerrion. Please use the right code. Code Jerrion. I still love you boys though. Otherwise, that's it from me, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.